नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम व्यूअर्स यू आर वाचिंग द न्यूज विद योर होस्ट कृति मिश्रा गेट रेडी फॉर योर डेली डोज ऑफ नेशनल एंड ग्लोबल डेवलपमेंट्स फर्स्ट अप द हेडलाइंस दिस वेंसडे इवनिंग राज्यसभा पासिस क्रिमिनल प्रोसीजर आइडेंटिफिकेशन बिल बिल रिलेटेड टू इंक्लूजन ऑफ डालोंग कम्युनिटी इन त्रिपुरा इन लिस्ट ऑफ शेड्यूल्ड ट्राइब्स आल्सो पास्ड India has chosen the side of peace in Ukraine Russia conflict says external affairs minister in reply to discussion under rule 193 in Lok Sabha lower house also passes bill on weapons of mass destruction Russian forces continue to bombard Ukraine America to give missiles worth 100 million dollars to war torn Ukraine National interest paramount for government says Prime Minister Modi in address to BJP workers on 42nd Foundation Day of the party. India will remain fastest growing economy says Asian Development Bank. Project 7.5% growth in 2022-23 estimates 8% in next financial year. And on to our flash news segment now. President Ramnath Kovind visits Dutch Parliament, holds meetings with Netherlands Prime Minister. IMF lauds India's Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana program, says it prevented extreme poverty in country during COVID-19 pandemic. India takes number three slot in terms of unicorns. 99 unicorns registered so far in the country. Bihar Chief Minister announces 11 lakh ex gratia for CRPF head constable martyred in Jammu and Kashmir. Ines Tharangini embarks on 14-day national voyage Lokyan 2022 from Kochi. Exports of agricultural products for 2021-22 crosses 50 billion dollar mark. NCP chief Sharad Pawar meets Prime Minister Modi on enforcement directorate's action against Shiv Sena leader Sanjay Raut. Supreme Court cites Right to Education Act says government should have financial impact in mind while coming up with schemes. High Court gives 6 weeks to JNK government to identify illegal residents from Myanmar and Bangladesh. and heat wave in delhi to intensify mercury could touch 43 degree celsius by saturday now news from the ongoing session of parliament parliament on wednesday passed the criminal procedure identification bill 2022 after its approval in the rajya sabha replying to the discussion on the bill home minister amit shah said The 100-year-old bill will facilitate the use of technology according to the present situation to strengthen conviction rate in crimes. He said if criminals are not convicted, faith in the law can't be strengthened among a large section of the society that lives according to the law of the land. The Lok Sabha had passed the bill on 4th of April. इस देश में गुनाहों के प्रमाण को कम किया जाए, इस देश में सजा के प्रमाण को बढ़ाया जाए। और इस देश के कानून और व्यवस्था की स्थिति को सुधारा जाए और इस देश की आंतरिक सुरक्षा को सुदृढ़ कि एन में जो डेटा आएगा वो सुरक्षित प्लेटफॉर्म पर और सुरक्षित हार्डवेयर के अंदर ही रहेगा एंड पार्लियामेंट ऑन वेंसडे आल्सो अप्रूव द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन शेड्यूल ट्राइब्स ऑडियो अमेंडमेंट बिल 2022 रिलेटिंग टू द स्टेट ऑफ त्रिपुरा राज्यसभा पास द बिल बाय वॉइस वोट आफ्टर डिस्कशन The bill provides for the inclusion of the Darlong community as a subcast of the Kukis in entry 9 of the list of scheduled tribes in relation to the state of Tripura. Responding to the discussion on the bill in the house, Minister of State for Tribal Affairs Renuka Singh said, "The culture, tradition and problems of the tribal people are very sensitive matters." She said the process of including a community in the scheduled tribe list is a long process and only after it is completed can the government bring a bill in parliament. Lok Sabha has already passed this bill. Tripura ki jo Darlok janjati hai, wo bhi intezar kar rahi thi. Aur ye aisi sarkar hai bahar, jaha par janta ki suni jati hai aur janta ki umido ko yaha par puri ki jati hai. To apne jo Chhattisgarh ke janjatiyon ki 
चिंता की है उसको बहुत जल्दी हमारी सरकार विधेयक के रूप में लेकर आएगी An external affairs minister S J Shankar on Wednesday replied to the discussion under Rule 193 on Ukraine in the Lok Sabha. He said India is completely against the conflict in Ukraine and in favour of an immediate end to the violence. He also asserted that if he had to choose any one side on this issue, then it will be the side of peace. He said no solution can come at the cost of violence and innocent lives. Dialogue and diplomacy is the only solution. The foreign minister said the Ukraine. government has decided to give some relaxation to indian students forced to return from their places to complete their medical studies he said india has tried to provide all possible humanitarian aid to the war torn ukraine if india can be of any assistance in this matter we will be glad to contribute two the ground situation calls for urgent humanitarian relief We have already provided 90 tons of relief material, and I was glad to see that many honourable members yesterday noted it and appreciated it. And we did it even while we were in the middle of an evacuation. So I think that also is a factor that should be recognised. There was great concern. Discovery of large number of bodies in Bucha. S. J. Shankar said, "We condemn these killings. We support the call for an independent inquiry into this incident." many honorable members brought up the incident the happenings uh, in burcha and i want to say that we are deeply disturbed by the reports uh, we strongly condemn the killings which have taken place there this is an extremely serious matter and we support the call for an independent investigation and after the discussion in the lower house prime minister modi congratulated members on the rich level of the debate he said such bipartisanship or good well for india on the world stage and moving on now the international monetary fund has lauded india's food subsidy program that helped prevent the rise of extreme poverty in the country during the covid-19 pandemic the monetary fund said in a report that food transfers and the expansion of subsidies have been important tools for poverty alleviation Union Defence Minister Rajnath Singh took part in the Commanders Conference of the Air Force on Wednesday. Addressing the senior commanders, he praised the role of the Air Force in Operation Ganga. He also stressed the need to indigenize the production of military equipment in view of the prevailing geopolitical situation. The Meghalaya High Court has put on hold all the recruitment processes of the state government till the roster system is implemented. The bench said the absence of the roster system leaves open possibilities of nepotism. Air Asia will resume flights connecting India with Malaysia and Thailand this month. Flights will be gradually restored on six routes between India and Malaysia. India resumed regular international flight services from March 27th after nearly 2 years of the COVID-19 pandemic. And two terrorists of banned terrorist organization Ansar Gajwatul Hind and Lakshray Taiba were killed in an encounter with security forces in Thral area of Jammu and Kashmir's Pulwama district. The terrorists were identified as Safat Muzaffar Sofi of Ansar Gazwatul Hind and Umar Teli of Lashkar. Umar Teli and Safat, both local terrorists, they were operating in both Srinagar. After many incidents, after several 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 incidents, और इनकाउंटर में दोनों टूरिस्ट मारा गया है नाउ न्यूज़ फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ बिजनेस एंड इकोनॉमी द एशियन डेवलपमेंट बैंक हैज सेड इंडिया इज लाइकली टू मेंटेन इट्स पोजीशन एज द फास्टेस्ट ग्रोइंग मेजर इकोनॉमी इन इट्स आउटलुक द बैंक हैज प्रोजेक्टेड दैट इंडिया विल क्लॉक अ ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ 7.5% इन द फिस्कल ईयर 2022-23 द ग्रोथ रेट विल एक्सेलरेट फर्दर इन 2023-24 and will be at 8% during the fiscal bank however has cautioned that geopolitical uncertainty and new covid-19 outbreaks and virus variants could derail this momentum and profit booking on second straight day kept the market in control of bears the subdued performance of the it sector in anticipation of weak 
results on a queue on queue basis and weak global queues kept the indices down. Overall, BSE Sensex lost 566 points and closed at 59,610, a drop of 1%. On the other hand, NSE Nifty 50 was also about 150 points. It closed at 17,808 levels. And time for a short break now. On the other side, let's meet the world's first humanoid artist who specializes in painting human portraits. Today we are discussing the Protection of Human Rights Act 1993. India signed and adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It strengthens our democracy and also gives a voice to people. Watch with us, 75 years lost that shaped India. We all know the importance of good health, but often we don't know how to achieve it. There's plenty of information available, but again, we don't know what is right and what is wrong. To know the truth and get your answers straight from some of India's top specialists, join me, Dr. Amrish Mithal, on Healthy India, only on Sunset TV. Welcome back. You're watching the news. Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal said India and Australia should increase bilateral trade to $100 billion by 2030. At present, trade between the two countries is $27.5 billion. Goyal, who is on a three-day visit to Australia, said both countries are moving towards an agreement to increase cooperation in the education sector. I'm committed and absolutely confident that we should not aim for anything small. You mentioned the figures of your trade with China. I'm actually tempted to reset what I said earlier in the day. Now the 100 billion looks small. Now news from Ukraine-Russia conflict. India has condemned the killing of civilians at Bucha in Ukraine and backed the call for an independent investigation into the incident, speaking at a meeting of the UN Security Council that was also addressed by Ukrainian President Zelensky, T.S. Rimurthy, the Indian representative to the UN, described reports of civilian killings in Bucha as deeply disturbing. Killings in the town of Bucha dominated the United Nations Security Council meeting. Accusing Russia of war crimes, America demanded that Russia be barred from the Human Rights Council. Every day we see more and more how little Russia respects human rights. And that is why I announced yesterday that the United States, in coordination with Ukraine and many other UN member states, will seek Russia's suspension from the UN Human Rights Council. India also condemned the killing of innocent people and called for an independent investigation. Indian Representative T.S. Tirumurthy said, when innocent lives are at stake, diplomacy is the only option. India continues to remain deeply concerned at the worsening situation and reiterates its call for immediate cessation of violence and end to hostilities. We have emphasized right from the beginning of the conflict the need to pursue the path of diplomacy and dialogue. When innocent human lives are at stake, diplomacy must prevail as the only viable option. However, China said that though the images coming from Bucha are very disturbing, the accusations should be based on facts. Russia has denied any role in the killings in Bucha. It termed it as Ukraine's staged episode. The biggest criticism of the United Nations came from Ukrainian President Zelensky. Questioning its very significance, he said the main institution of the world that should prevent coercion by aggressors is unable to guarantee peace. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. And Russian forces pounded key cities in Ukraine on Wednesday, a day when Ukraine President Zelensky once again urged the West to act decisively on the crisis. He urged new and tougher sanctions against Russia in response to the civilian killings that have been widely condemned as war crimes by the world. Mounting the next stage of its military operation, Russian forces are trying to surround Ukrainian forces to take control of the entire Donbass. 
Donbass includes Donetsk and Luhansk regions that Russia has declared independent. Meanwhile, Russian forces continue to shell cities in eastern and southern Ukraine. Kharkiv saw intense shelling overnight, while Irpin has turned into a ghost town. In the smudged picture of devastation, differentiating between government establishments and civilian buildings has become a difficult task. The once sleepy town of Butcha is now the epitome of brutality. The authorities have a difficult task of cleaning and diffusing live ammunition. There was a pause for a while in bomb shelling in Mariupol. People came out to collect humanitarian aid. Russian forces, meanwhile, are intensifying their attack in the area. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. <laughs>
A car crashed into the gate of Russian embassy in Romanian capital Bucharest on Wednesday, bursting into flames and killing the driver. The sedan did not enter the embassy compound. Firefighters who arrived at the scene were able to put the fire out, but the driver died at the scene. There was no immediate information on a possible motive or other details. Now all the sporting action from the world of sports. In Indian Premier League's 14th match, Kolkata Knight Riders are taking on five-times champion Mumbai Indians. The match is being played at Pune's Maharashtra Cricket Association Stadium. Mumbai Indians have again had a bad start to their campaign, having lost the first two matches. Rohit Sharma's team would be desperately looking to register their first win. On the other hand, Shreyas Ayer led KKR have two wins in three matches. In the 13th match of IPL 2022, played at the Vankheri Stadium in Mumbai on Tuesday, Royal Challengers Bangalore defeated Rajasthan Royals by four wickets. Batting first, Rajasthan Royals put up 169 for the loss of three wickets. Informed Rajasthan Royals opener, Joss Butler, scored a scintillating 70 of 47 balls. Royal Challengers seemed going downhill with five wickets down for 87. Shabazz Ahmed and Dinesh Karthik combined for the sixth wicket and received RCB's chances with the 67 runs partnership. Shabazz scored 45 of 26 and Karthik was not out on 44 of 23 balls. RCB won with five balls to spare. In badminton, third seed PV Sindhu has made it to the second round of the Korea Open Badminton Tournament. In the first round, Sindhu beat Lauren Lam of the United States of America in straight games 21-15, 21-14. Sindhu will face Japan's Aya Ohari in the round of 16. And in the men's singles draw, fifth seat, Kitami Srikanth defeated Malaysian Darren Liu, also in straight games. Though Liu gave a tough fight in the first game, Srikanth prevailed. 22-20, 21-11, Srikanth faces Israel's Misha in the second round. The CBI has registered a preliminary inquiry against Indian Olympic Association President Narinder Batra for misuse of 35 lakh of Hockey India funds. The Central Probe Agency had received a complaint against Batra following which it started this inquiry, which is the first step to establish criminality. It was alleged in the complaint that 35 lakh of Hockey India funds was used for personal benefits of Batra. And robots these days are doing a lot of work. One of them, Ida, can even paint portraits just like human thanks to a new arm filled with robotics and artificial intelligence technology. Take a look at this report. Have a lot of inspirations from different Meet Ida, the world's first ultra-realistic humanoid robot artist. Ida was built in 2019. With a robotic arm, she uses a normal color palette and paintbrush. Her camera lens eyes take photos of subject, using them as reference for painting. Ida is not yet able to fully blend colors together, but the results are realistic. With artificial intelligence, Ida takes her own decisions. So two portraits of the same person can look different. Ida also knows numerous cultural references. I have a lot of inspirations from different places. I'm deeply inspired by the visual arts, also literature, Dante, Orwell, Aldous Huxley. Ida produces a portrait between 45 minutes and 1 hour and 15 minutes. It takes 5 hours for larger paintings. Asked if robots can be better artists than humans, Ida gets a bit philosophical. I think it depends on what is art. Is art supposed to be good or to create discussion? It's all about what the aim of the art is. To create a piece of art for the audience, to bring together the audience and the artists who are always changing as well, to make us aware of the reality of the world. 
just like her human counterparts Ida sells her artworks in 2019 her artworks generated more than 1 million dollars bureau report sansa tv we sign off viewers a relook at the headlines Rajya Sabha passes criminal procedure identification bill bill related to inclusion of dalon community in tripura in list of scheduled tribes also passed India has chosen the side of peace in Ukraine Russia conflict says external affairs minister in reply to discussion under rule 193 in Lok Sabha lower house also passes bill on weapons of mass destruction Russian forces continue to bombard Ukraine America to give missiles worth 100 billion dollars to war on Ukraine National interest paramount for government says Prime Minister Modi in address to BJP workers on 42nd foundation day of the party And India will remain the fastest growing economy says Asian Development Bank project 7.5% growth in 2022-23 estimates 8% in next financial year So viewers that's all we have for you in this edition thanks for watching and stay tuned to Sunset TV namaskar